Welcome back to this NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session, we introduced the Nash bargaining problem and the 5 axioms that Nash has introduced. And uh, we concluded with the statement of the Nash bargaining solution. Now we will prove this one. So, before we proceed for the proof, we will just give a small example and then uh, we go for the proof. So, let us consider the following uh, simple situation. Let us assume that the f is given by, so let us say this is a 4 comma 0 and this is 0 comma 4 and let us take this is 1 1. So, let us consider this convex hull to be f. Okay. So, f is this and let us take this v to be v is 1 1. So, the disagreement vector is 1 1. Now, when you take this one what we are really looking at is x 1 minus 1 into x 2 minus 1 and then you are trying to maximize over all x 1 greater than equals to 1, x 2 greater than equals to 1 and of course x 1 x 2 in f. If we really look at this one, in fact we can show is that this point 2 2 is going to maximize this. Okay. The solution is going to be 2 2 here, one can just uh, verify that f f is going to be 2 2 here. So, this is a uh, in fact uh, this is a symmetric set okay? and therefore, the both the values will be same. In fact, that itself will also give you the reason why it should be 2 2. In fact, whatever it is that will be in this vector in this line. Okay. And as you go further, you can see that this will be maximum and this is also a Pareto efficient because from this thing either directions I cannot improve. I cannot move this, if I move this side I am going out of it, this side also you cannot improve without this. So, therefore, this is also a Pareto efficient symmetry and in fact, the scale covariance you can try that if we take some everything is scaled by some lambda and we can see that the solution will also be scaled and of course, individually rationality and all the other assumptions. Okay. So, now let us go to the theorem thing. So, there exist unique solution satisfying 5 axioms. So, recall the 5 axioms are basic are the Pareto efficiencies, the strong efficiency, then individual rationality, then scale covariance, then independence of irrelevant uh, alternatives, then symmetry. So, these are the 5 axioms and in fact, the solution is given by f of f v, this is this maximizes the, the product x 1 minus v 1 into x 2 minus v 2 such that x 1 x 2 is in f such that x 1 greater than equals to v 1 x 2 greater than equals to v 2. So, whatever maximizes this, this f should be inside that. Okay. Okay. So, now let us try to prove it. So, the proof we first prove for for class of problems called essential bargaining problems and then we generalize we start start with this this thing so let me define what is this thing f v is called essential bargaining problem 
if there exists at least one allocation y in f that is strictly better for both the players than the disagreement allocation. That is y1 is strictly bigger than v1. Similarly, y2 is strictly bigger than v2. Okay. If there is a st strictly better allocation for both players, then you are calling that bargaining problem as essential. So, we start with this problem and then we see. So, let us say we are uh, fv is essential. So, therefore, there exists some y in f such that y1 is bigger than v1, y2 is bigger than v2. So, this is automatic. Now, let us consider, uh, consider this optimization problem. max x1 x2 in f with x1 greater than equals to v1 x2 greater than equals to v2 of this x1 minus v1 into x2 minus v2. Let us look at this one. So, this is sometimes called Nash product. Okay. So, what we would like to now look at is that the function x1 x2 going to x1 minus v1 into x2 minus v2. So, this is basically f2 or this function is strictly quasi concave. So, so let us uh, let me define we have we have introduced convex functions and concave, concave functions but not quasi concave. So let me define what is quasi concave a function f from some set S to R is quasi concave of course S I am assume convex set quasi concave if f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is greater than equals to minimum of f x f y. This should be true for every x y in S and lambda in 0 1. If this condition holds true, then you will call it as a quasi concave function and instead of less than or equals to if I make it strict then it becomes a strict quasi concave. In fact, I would like to point out the difference between concave function in the concave function this will not be minimum of f x f y it is simply lambda f x plus 1 minus lambda f y and then in fact, you can easily verify that every concave function is quasi concave, but not the otherwise. So, now in fact, uh, what uh, a simple exercise is that the Nash product is strict quasi concave for essential bargaining problem. Okay. So, this is first thing. Then the second thing I would like to say is that um, strict quasi concave function will have a 
unique, optimal solution, of course, here maximum. So, again, uh, under the natural assumptions, basically, we need to assume this compactness of this thing. So, we we can say that this is basically a there will be a unique maximum and this is again not very hard to prove it. In fact, uh, if we go back to the convex functions that we have introduced use the same ideas and to show that this quasi concave function will automatically have, will have a maximum. This I will leave it uh, for you to fill these details. So, these are not very hard not, uh, not hard. Okay. So, now uh, using this result Nash product has unique maximizer. So, let me call this as x1 star x2 star. Okay. So, so, remember we are always living in the compact this thing all our uh, solutions and everything we are making them to be bounded if they are not bounded the solution becomes meaningless because you are maximizing them and uh, if, if it is not bounded then one person can keep on increasing this thing. So, therefore, uh, there is no solution. So, therefore, we are always in the boundedness setup. So, that is also necessary in this thing when I am talking about existence of an optimal solution. Okay. So, let us call for the Nash product that becomes a strict quasi concave for the essential bargaining problem and let us call that uh, maximizer to be x1 star x2 star. So, now let us look at, so let us take f in R2, let us take this is convex and close. Suppose then f intersection x1 x2 such that x1 greater than equals to v1 x2 greater than equals to v2 this is non empty and bounded ok so uh, now suppose f f v satisfies the five axioms Suppose f f v satisfies the five axioms that is the strong efficiency and scale covariance independent uh, individually rational the symmetry independent of in irrelevant alternatives all the five axioms if it is satisfied. Now clearly we can see that f this has to happen ok. So, uh, if f satisfies this then f has to be this solution. So, that is uh, uh, very easy to verify this fact. So, let us now slowly get into the, the other parts of it ok. So, let us uh, we start using the notation n x 1 x 2 to be x 1 minus v 1 for the Nash product because we use this again and again. Okay. So, here uh, of course, we have to verify here all the 5 axioms satisfies that we will do it, but first what we will do is that uh, define part 1 in the part 1 define f f v to be x 1 star x 2 star we, sh we, pr we show that f satisfies all 5 axioms ok that is the first part in the part 2 ok. So, suppose f satisfies all axioms then 
f f v is nothing but x 1 star x 2 star these are the two ways we have to prove it and we will prove the, all the things. So, let us start with this thing ok. Now, in the part 1 x 1 star x 2 star satisfies all the assumptions. This is what we need to prove. So, let us do it. Now, the strong efficiency ok. Let us say if x 1 x 2 is less than equals to y 1 y 2 then n x 1 x 2 is certainly less than equals to n y 1 y 2. This is a very easy fact to observe that means if uh, you take any vector and if you increase at least one of the coordinate then the Nash product is going to increase. Therefore, what we can say here is that if x 1 star x 2 star is maximizing the Nash product there cannot be any vector which is higher than x 1 star x 2 star it follows from this thing. Therefore, x 1 star x 2 star is strongly efficient ok. So, because if there is some vector which is higher than this that corresponding Nash product will be higher that follows from this fact. Therefore, the strong efficiency automatically holds. Now, individually rationality next assumption next axiom. Now, if you look at the way we have defined x 1 star x 2 star we know that that is uh, x 1 star x 2 star maximizes Nash product over all x 1 greater than equals to v 1 x 2 greater than equals to v 2 and by definition x 1 star and x 2 star should be bigger than v 1 and v 2 respectively. So, therefore, individually rationality automatically holds ok. Then the scale covariance. So, let us take lambda 1 greater than 0, lambda 2 greater than 0 and then mu 1 mu 2. Then look at the g to be lambda 1 x 1 plus mu 1, lambda 2 x 2 plus mu 2 such that x 1 x 2 is in f. Now, corresponding this thing max y 1 y 2 in g of y 1 minus lambda 1 v 1 plus mu 1 into y 2 minus lambda 2 v 2 plus mu 2. Now, any y 1 is in this fashion. So, therefore, this particular thing can be written as lambda 1 into x 1 minus v 1 plus mu 1 and minus mu 1 that gets cancelled here into lambda 2 into x 2 minus v 2 where x 1 x 2 belongs to f. Now, lambda 1 lambda 2 are positive therefore, maximizing this quantity is same as maximizing this into this over x 1 x 2 in f and therefore, whatever maximizes this the corresponding lambda 1 x 1 star plus lambda 2 x 2 star maximizes in G the same Nash product. Therefore, what we have proved here is that f g lambda v 1 plus mu 1 lambda 2 v 2 plus mu 2 this is the degree of this one this is same as lambda 1 f 1 f f v plus mu 1 lambda 2 f 2 f v plus mu 2. So, this is automatically follows. Next, next we need to look at the independence of irrelevant alternatives. So, g is contained in f, g is close convex. Now, x 1 
star x 2 star optimal to f v. Okay. Let y 1 star y 2 star optimal to let us say g v. Now what we have is that y 1 star y 2 y2 star is in G which is also in F. Therefore, what we have is n x1 star x2 star the Nash product correspond to x1 star x2 star should be bigger than or equals to n y1 star y2 star that is the first. Now, but y1 star y2 star is optimal to G v therefore, Nash product corresponding to G the y1 star y2 star is the maximum therefore n y1 star y2 star must be maximum over all Nash products inside G but x1 star x2 star is in G by the independent irrelevant axiom therefore this is greater than equals to n x1 star x2 star. So therefore both of them are one and the same thing therefore x1 star x2 star and y1 star y2 star they must be one and the same. The reason why this is coming is that f is essential and the Nash product is quasi strictly quasi concave and therefore it has a unique optimal solution. So therefore x1 star x2 star should be same as y1 star y2 star which is coming because strict quasi concave this is necessary. Okay. So, therefore, independent of irrelevant alternatives also holds. Then the final thing that is symmetry. So, what we have is that if x1, x2 belongs to f implies x2, x1 is also in f. In fact, that, that is a essentially this thing. Now, and we also have v1 is equals to v2. Therefore, x1 star, x2 star maximizes x1 minus v1 into x2 minus v1 because v1 and v2 are same this thing is there. Okay. So, x1 star x2 star maximizes this not only that x2 star x1 star also will maximize this because of this symmetric nature v1 is same as this thing these two are same therefore if x1 star x2 star maximizes this x2 star x1 star also will maximize now we have the unique maximum quasi strict concavity gives that there is a unique maximizer therefore x1 star x2 star should be same as x2 star x1 star by quasi concave and the strict okay therefore x1 star is the same as x2 star that is the symmetry. So therefore, the symmetric condition axiom is also satisfied and with the in this thing. Okay. Therefore, if I define this uh, solution like this then I know that all these 5 axioms are satisfied. Now the next part is part 2. So what we have to show is that suppose if the solution satisfies all 5 axioms then we need to show that f f y maximizes the Nash product. Okay. So, uh, let us say we need to show f f v is nothing but x 1 star x 2 star where x 1 star x 2 star maximizes Nash product. So, I am not writing this notation again here x1 star x2 star is the one which maximizing Nash product and then I need to show that if f satisfies all these axioms this must be true. Okay. Now, first thing that we would like to say is that note that x1 star is strictly bigger than v1 similarly x2 star is strictly bigger than v2. This is happening because f is essential because if f is essential there is at least one vector which is higher than v1 and v2 both therefore the Nash product should be bigger than those things and then and hence this happens. 
Now consider the following thing, consider L x1 x2 is equals to lambda 1 x1 plus mu 1 lambda 2 x2 plus mu 2, where lambda 1 I will choose it to be 1 by x1 star minus v1 lambda 2 is 1 by x2 star minus v2 mu 1 is equals to minus v1 by x1 star minus v1 mu 2 is minus v2 by x2 star minus v2. I consider this. Now in other words what we have is that L x1 x2 is nothing but x1 minus v1 by x1 star minus v1 x2 minus v2 by x2 star minus v2. This is the transformation that we are considering it. Now once you look at it, first thing I would like to notice is that L v1 v2 is 0 0, L x1 star x2 star is 1 1. Now define g to be set of all L x1 x2 such that x1 x2 is in f. Therefore, now the problem f v is now transformed to g 0 0 by the scale this thing by scaling this thing. Now, so therefore, what should we now say? When you do this one, all these terms, if we really look at it, okay. So this particular thing satisfies at x1, x1 star, 1, 1 is the maximum that can come. In fact, 1, it is easy to verify that 1, 1 is strong Pareto efficient point of G. This is uh, by looking at this particular thing, one can see this one by the Nash product and other thing. Now, therefore, therefore G00, the solution of this has to be 1, 1. Okay. So, in fact, uh, in the, here the Nash product is going to be x1 minus 0 into x2 minus 0 which is simply x1 x2. So in fact we can show that x1 plus x2 is always less than equals to 2 that is that comes from here. If I take the this plus this we can actually try to show that this is always less than or equals to 2. In fact uh, we can prove it by a contradiction. So let us to show this let us assume x1 plus x2 is strictly greater than 2. Okay. Suppose alpha is a number in 0, 1 and take t to be 1 minus alpha into 1, 1 plus alpha into x1, x2. So this is nothing but 1 minus alpha plus alpha x1. 1 minus alpha plus alpha x2. Okay. So, g is convex, 1 1 is in g, therefore t is in g. Okay. What is now t1, t2? That is nothing but 1 minus alpha plus alpha x1 into 1 minus alpha plus alpha x2. So, if I calculate this one, this is going to be 1 minus alpha square plus alpha square x1 x2 plus 1 minus alpha into alpha into x1 plus x2. Okay. Therefore, because we have assumed that x1 plus x2 is uh, greater than 2, if x1 plus x2 this is greater than 2, then what we can say is that t1 t2 this is greater than 2, I am just putting that one here 
is that then T1 T2 is bigger than 1 minus alpha square plus alpha square x1 x2 plus 1 minus alpha into alpha because alpha is a number between uh, 0 and 1. So, therefore, this should be strictly smaller this is same as 1 minus alpha into plus alpha square x1 x2. Now, we can choose alpha sufficiently small such that we can choose alpha and make t1 t2 bigger than 1 because if alpha is sufficiently small minus alpha plus alpha square x1 x2 I can make it strictly greater than 0 therefore this becomes at least bigger than 1 so therefore t1 greater than t2 this is contradiction because we know that 1 1 is the t1 t2 cannot be 1 this is basically this thing. Okay. So, now the g is bounded that we have. So, we can always find a rectangle H which is symmetric about line x1, x2. We can always find a rectangle H which is symmetric which sits inside which is outside uh, G that means G is contained in H, H is convex bounded this such a thing is always possible. Further choose H such that 1 1 in G is on the boundary of H. We can also choose this uh, rectangle in such a way that this 1 1 is on the boundary of H. Now strong efficiency implies F H 0 0 should be 1 1. And now using the independence of so uh, this thing this is same as F G 0 0. Now F 0 G 0 this is nothing but L F F V because of the scale uh, invariance and uh, this thing. Now this implies L F F V is nothing but our 1 1. Now if I write down everything this implies F F V has to be x1 star x2 star. So, this becomes the this thing. Now, this becomes a it proves the fact that if f satisfies all these uh, axioms then the solution is nothing but the solution corresponds to the Nash bargain. Of course, so far we have considered the assumption that the bargaining problem is essential. So, now we need to look at the non-essential. Now, consider F V which is inessential. Okay. So, therefore, uh, this immediately implies F is convex implies there exists at least one player I such that y1 greater than equals to v1 and y2 greater than equals to v2 implies yi is equals to vi for all y1 y2 in f. That means any point if you take it which is bigger than v1 in v2 one of the player there must be a player i such that yi and vi must be same. So, that is uh, that happens. Okay. So, if this does not happen that means y1 greater than v1 and y2 greater than v2. 
so both will happen. So therefore that, that is not uh, we are assuming f to be inessential ok. Without loss of generality we can take that um, y1 greater than equals to v1 y2 greater than equals to v2 implies y1 is equals to v1 for all y1 y2 is equals to f. Basically we are uh, considering this uh, normalizing this player one of the player has equality always ok. So now suppose x star is an allocation in f that is best for player 2 subject to constraint x1 is equals to v1 ok. So, what is the best when x1 is equals to v1 and look at the best allocation for the player 2. So, this is there in fact under this constraint note that the Nash uh, bargaining product will be 0. Note that under the inessential thing Nash bargaining Nash product is always 0. So, therefore, uh, there is no uh, whatever maximizes that means everything should give 0. So, therefore, uh, that is one point which I will come back to this again. Okay. This implies x star is Pareto efficiency ok. So, in fact strong strongly Pareto efficient that is automatic and individually rational all the things come axiom 1 and 2 are already satisfied. Therefore, uh, we can easily say that f of f v is going to be x 1 star x 2 star. Now, in fact, this achieves even the maximum of the Nash product. Now, the remaining thing is we have to verify all the other axioms and in fact, they are not very hard to show it because once we assume that one of the player has this thing and in every when, whenever you scale it, the, the same condition holds true and everything can be proved. Okay. So, this proves even the inessential part. Okay, so, the details here has to be fixed which I will leave it to you and uh, one point I would like to say that under this inessential thing the Nash product is always 0 therefore, uh, everything maximizes. So, therefore, the condition whatever it we have said in the theorem that is automatically true. Okay. Okay, so, with this uh, we will conclude this session we will continue in the next session. Thank you. 